Hello students, today we are going to discuss the topic Green Revolution. Green Revolution. Okay, we know that India is an agricultural country. Okay, India is an agriculture country and uh, agriculture contributes about 33% of uh, GDP. What is GDP? Gross domestic product. Okay, and uh, remember 62% of Indians are in uh, agricultural field. Means what? Uh, for 62% of Indian population, they are getting employment through agriculture. So that's why India is an agricultural country. Right. And uh, remember the scenario after independence. After independence, we faced many challenges. Okay, and one of the main challenges is uh, increased food production. Increased food production. Why? To satisfy the hunger of uh, increasing population. Increasing population means what you have to understand after independence the population of India is going on increasing and uh, uh, Whereas uh, the food Demand demand for food also increased So that's why remember that uh, uh, We have to we have this challenge that is what enough food production for the increasing population Okay, but uh, one uh, problem is there in India. We have uh, uh, so much of land, but uh, everything is not uh, cultivable land. So we have uh, a limited uh, cultivable land. So that means only limited land is fit for uh, cultivation. Only limited land is fit for cultivation. So now uh, uh, that's why the India has to strive to increase the yield per unit area okay so we have to uh, increase the yield in the okay available cultivable land so that is uh, a big challenge and that's why how we have uh, uh, solved this problem so it is uh, solved by the development of several high yielding varieties of wheat and rice okay high yielding varieties of wheat and rice and of course we know that uh, uh, the staple food in india is what rice but of course uh, at many places and especially in north india they like wheat so the wheat and rice are uh, the major food uh, crops in india so that's why they developed and uh, uh, this happened in mid 1960s this happened this development of high yielding varieties of wheat and rice uh, took place in mid 1960 okay and this phase is often referred to as the green revolution so this mid 1960s phase is referred to as the green revolution Okay, and uh, remember that uh, uh, this green revolution uh, occurred uh, between the years 1960 to 2000 and uh, uh, what are the achievements we have, uh, uh, we, uh, what we have achieved. Okay, and uh, remember this uh, wheat production was earlier it was 11 million tons, 11 million tons and uh, it is increased to 75 million tons okay in the similar way okay rice production was earlier 35 million tons and that has been increased to 89.5 million tons so remember that uh, it is uh, 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 not only totally sufficient it is more than sufficient that's why now India is able to export uh, this rice as well as the wheat okay 
and actually how this uh, has happened uh, we have to uh, mention some uh, people here one is norman e borlaug another one is ms swaminathan and uh, remember this norman e borlaug is considered as father of green revolution whereas ms swaminathan is considered as father of green revolution in india and one more point you had to remember that uh, the green revolution first uh, witnessed by two countries one is mexico and the other one is what uh, india okay and the norman e borlaug dr norman e borlaug so uh, he used to work at uh, uh, this institute international center for wheat and maize improvement international center for wheat and maize improvement at in mexico and he developed semi dwarf wheat varieties he developed semi dwarf wheat varieties and what are the characteristics of uh, the semi dwarf uh, wheat varieties so it is a high yielding one means what productivity is more and uh, uh, it is uh, having resistance for lodging resistance for lodging means what what is this lodging uh, uh, you see whenever uh, uh, if you get into a rice field you will find uh, sometimes the plants will bend downwards this bending of uh, uh, the shoot is called what lodging and that uh, uh, creates a, a big problem and uh, even uh, uh, the productivity will decrease or the yield will decrease but uh, this semi dwarf variety is having a resistance for lodging that is it they won't bend they always grow straight and the next one uh, uh, they are resistant for uh, pathogens and pests they are resistant for resistant for pathogen and pest resistant and uh, they are fertilizer uh, responsive means what uh, uh, the farmers uh, they will use the uh, different fertilizers and uh, these fertilizers should be consumed by the plant and it should uh, make use of that fertilizer but uh, all plants uh, may not be able to utilize them properly but uh, this variety is able to utilize these fertilizers that are supplied to the plant and uh, they are having a smaller uh, growth period means what they do not take uh, much time for uh, the growth means what uh, you see early maturing varieties means what uh, within a short uh, period you will get uh, you can go for harvest so uh, a plus point so these are all all what uh, the characteristics of semi dwarf wheat varieties and developed by norman e borlaug uh, in mexico at uh, this institute international center for wheat and maize improvement and later uh, our uh, our scientist uh, okay dr ms swaminathan and he initiated the collaboration with dr borlaug and uh, it has culminated uh, into green revolution through introduction of mexican varieties of wheat in india so uh, that is what ms swaminathan met uh, uh, normally borlaug and he okay and he uh, okay made one uh, uh, collaboration and he brought these mexican uh, varieties of wheat into india and uh, that resulted in uh, the green revolution in india that's why we call ms swaminathan as uh, the father of green revolution in india of course here uh, you have to remember one okay very important point for uh, the competitive examinations and when the question comes who is father of green revolution then you have to say norman e borlaug and when the question is uh, like this who is father of green revolution in india then uh, you have to go for ms swaminath okay and uh, we will uh, uh, now we'll see what are uh, uh, the varieties that were introduced into india and what are developed in india and how we have achieved this green revolution you know let us see these uh, uh, wheat and rice 
Okay. So, uh, the Sonora 64 and Lerma Rosa 64 are the semi dwarf varieties of wheat developed by Norman E. Borlaug and they were brought into India by M. S. Swaminathan and uh, he modified them through gamma radiations. Okay. Sonora 64 and Lerma Rosa 64 were brought to India and they are uh, not used directly but they are modified through gamma radiations and so that uh, they will withstand in Indian uh, soil also. So that is what uh, he did. And later in 1963, okay, Sonalika and Kalyan Sona, which are also semi dwarf varieties, were introduced not in a particular place in all wheat growing belts of India. Okay, like that, you just remember these examples Sonara 64, Lerma Rosa 64, Sonalika, Kalyan Sona. These are all uh, uh, the semi dwarf varieties of wheat and which are called Mexican wheat varieties. Okay, and uh, when it comes to rice, okay, and remember IRRI, what is this IRRI full form? International Rice Research Institute. International Rice Research Institute in Philippines. Okay, and uh, they have developed uh, semi dwarf rice varieties, semi dwarf rice varieties, and which are uh, uh, given codes like uh, IR8 and IR24. IR8 and IR24. Okay, among these IR8 and IR24, IR8 is brought to India. Okay, and uh, one more variety developed by Taiwan people that is Taichung native one variety and both of them are uh, semi dwarf varieties of rice and uh, by using both of them uh, uh, our Indians that is uh, M.S. Swaminathan has created uh, semi dwarf varieties in the year 1966. Okay, and later uh, they developed some more uh, better yielding varieties of rice semi dwarf uh, rice semi dwarf varieties of rice which are uh, named as jaya and ratna so remember uh, these are all what semi dwarf rice varieties which are having uh, those characters which we discussed earlier that is high they are high yielding they have resistance to lodging and uh, they have resistance to pests and pathogens okay uh, and uh, they are uh, early maturing means what sh they have a short period okay we can harvest them uh, uh, within a short duration so uh, just remember in uh, what are the rice varieties uh, that uh, uh, are introduced or that are developed in india are what ir8 taichung native one jaya and ratna these are rice varieties and uh, uh, we will discuss about even uh, uh, the sugar cane now. Okay, India mainly depends on uh, sugar, on uh, uh, sugar cane. That means we extract uh, sugar from uh, the sugar cane plant. Of course, in the uh, majority of uh, developed countries, so they get uh, the sugar from uh, sugar beet. That's why that is called beet sugar. And whereas uh, uh, still now, uh, uh, okay, we are uh, uh, getting uh, sugar only from uh, the sugar cane. And uh, uh, this sugar cane is cultivated in North India as well as in uh, South India. But uh, uh, earlier, okay, so the North Indians used to cultivate one species of saccharum, that is what saccharum barbadans. And while uh, the South Indians used to cultivate the saccharum officinar. Uh, uh, both of them are having some uh, differences. So, this Sakar Barbadans is uh, having poor sugar content. Content uh, sugar content is less, and uh, uh, the low yield because uh, they are uh, uh, the stems are not thick; they are uh, thin, thin stems. And even uh, uh, the internodal length is also less in this uh, Sakar Barbadans. 
whereas uh, south indian uh, farmers were very happy as they were cultivating the sakaram officinarum which uh, is popularly known as noble sugar cane noble sugar cane so uh, remember this uh, name noble sugar cane is the name given for sakaram officinarum and uh, uh, why the farmers are very happy because uh, it is having uh, high sugar content high sugar content and uh, they have thicker stems and long internodes long internodes so uh, now uh, uh, these uh, north indians they want to cultivate in this uh, sakaram officinarum in their land but because of uh, uh, low temperatures in winter so this uh, sakaram officinarum was uh, unable to grow in north indian belt so that's why what uh, the scientists did uh, they have crossed these two plants that is sakaram barbadens and sakaram officinarum and they have created one uh, hybrid variety and that hybrid variety uh, is now cultivated in uh, north india and uh, uh, what are the characters that are exhibited by this uh, hybrid variety okay so it is showing uh, high sugar content high sugar and thicker stems and uh, uh, remember that it is it is showing adjustability that is what it is able to ability to grow in north indian soils ability to grow in north indian soils north indian soils so able means what uh, you should remember that sakaram officinarum doesn't have uh, the ability to grow in north india but uh, the hybrid that is developed uh, by crossing these two okay is having is, it got uh, this character that is what uh, uh, adjustability or acclimatization property it developed acclimatization property so that is about uh, the sugar cane and when uh, we come to the millets okay so what are these millets plants producing large crops with small seeds are called what millets of course uh, actually these are the minor cereals because major cereals and minor cereals two types are there and uh, the millets are the minor cereals but uh, here uh, remember that the maize is also placed because uh, this maize uh, uh, is not normal one uh, will produce what the small uh, uh, corns okay small grains so bajra jowa and maize these are they are developed through hybridization technique hybridization and they developed the hybrid varieties which are high yielding and resistant to water stress of course this is not mentioned in the uh, in our book but uh, we had it is worth mentioning to mention one institute here that is ecrisat has developed these uh, uh, hybrid varieties which are resistant to water stress that's why now these millets uh, are cultivated even in dry areas uh, in uh, many places uh, in uh, india so what is ecrisat international crop research institute for semi arid tropics international international crop research institute institute for semi arid tropics there is at uh, there is in hyderabad okay so uh, like this by introducing and by developing uh, different varieties of wheat rice sugarcane and millets we have achieved uh, the green revolution that is uh, uh, that is what is the green revolution okay